you come across a trinomial that looks like this. You notice that the value of a, or the coefficient in front of x squared, is equal to 2, not 1, making this a complex trinomial that can't be factored using simple trinomial factoring. You know these types of factoring problems are tough, and you've tried a few different factoring strategies that your teacher has shown you, like decomposition. You know, the long, complicated method that requires common factoring not once, but two times, as well as knowing how to factor by grouping. Yeah, no. You've also tried magic squares, and like me, that's really not your thing. In this video, I'm going to show you a quick, epic shortcut for factoring trinomials like this that your teacher has never shown you. Unless your teacher's me, in which case I've probably shown you this before. If the a value of this trinomial were 1, making this a simple trinomial, we could factor it by finding two numbers which add to get negative 5 while also multiplying to get negative 12. However, since our a value is not 1, the simple trinomial factoring method fails. Instead, we'll attempt to find two numbers which add to get negative 5 while also multiplying to get negative 12 times 2, our a value, also known as negative 24. Now this is easily the most complex part of this factoring shortcut. So I'm going to show you how I quickly determine the two numbers that will add to get negative 5 while also multiplying to get negative 24. I find it easiest to start with the multiplication. So what are two numbers that multiply to get negative 24? I find it works best if you just start with the pair of numbers that first pop into your head. Let's say those numbers were negative 12 and 2. Negative 12 and 2 multiply to get negative 24, but I could also choose to make the 2 negative and the 12 positive. However, neither of these combinations will add to get negative 5. So I can throw those numbers in the garbage. <laughs> or the green bin. The numbers 12 and 2 are pretty far apart, which makes it impossible for them to get anywhere close to negative 5 when I add them. So I move on to another combination of numbers that will multiply to get negative 24. This time I want to pick numbers that are closer together. For instance, negative 8 and 3. I know negative 8 times 3 is negative 24, but there's also another combination, negative 3 times 8. Again, I'm going to check to see if it's possible to add either pair of numbers to produce negative 5. In this case, I'm going to choose negative 8 and 3, which have a product of negative 24, but also have a sum of negative 5. So moving forward, I'm going to work with negative 8 and 3 as my two numbers, which have a product of negative 24 and a sum of negative 5. Like I said, that's the hardest part of this factoring strategy. But with that out of the way, you're ready to begin the epic factoring shortcut. Now, just a disclaimer, this factoring strategy is super weird. And I'm not going to explain why this factoring strategy works in this video, because odds are, at this point, you probably just want an easy factoring strategy that works. So we're going to start by taking our two numbers, negative 8 and 3, and we're going to divide them by the a value of our original trinomial, in this case, 2. This results in two fractions, negative 8 over 2 and 3 over 2. The next thing I'm going to do is check to see if I can reduce either of these fractions. In this example, I can reduce negative 8 over 2 into negative 4 over 1. Negative 4 over 1 is just negative 4, but trust me, leave it as negative 4 over 1. 3 over 2 is already reduced as a fraction, so we're going to leave it how it is. Okay, so here's where things just get super weird. We're going to take these fractions, and we're going to tip the numerator from the left so that it falls over next to the denominator. <laughs> I know, just bear with me. We'll do the same for the second fraction, tipping the 3 in the numerator over so that it sits next to the denominator. Remember to keep the signs the same as the original fractions. Remember, our 4 was negative and our 3 was positive, so we're going to keep them that way. If you're not convinced at this point, trust me, here's where things get good. We're going to form a set of parentheses around each set of numbers. 1 and negative 4, 2 and 3. <laughs> and you'll notice that if I place an x, Next to the first number in each set of parentheses, I produce an expression which looks an awful lot like factored form. So, so wait, that, that's it? Yes, that is it. Probably the weirdest but simplest factoring strategy you've ever seen. 